Uh, use the one on the website just because that's where uh, that's the newer one. So yeah, use the one on the website. All right. Yeah, but either way, I've been getting them. So you're good. Um, so today we're talking about, and for this week, actually, we're talking about our philosophy of education. Um, and so I want us to kind of break down what that means and what that is, um, because it it's a guiding statement for you as an educator. Um, and it's the assignment for this week. It's, it's the lab for this week. Um, and I want you guys to be able to not have any kind of hesitation or confusion when you go into that assignment. Uh, so I'm going to start and I want you all to answer this in the chat. Um, but I want you to tell me your why. Um, and I want you to tell me your why. And so this is the hard part. This is why I want you to just think for a minute um, before you type. I want you to tell me your why you want to be a teacher in less than 10 words. Okay, this is a hard part because we can talk and talk and talk and talk forever. Uh, because yes, Alicia, let me give you the number, honey. Uh, Alicia, I am putting it in the chat. There we go. Um, so the why is hard, right? A lot of us can talk and talk forever about why we want to do something. Why do I love basketball? Why do I uh, love baking? Why do I love... Um, but how do you condense that into one statement? Um, and so I'm going to give you about two minutes. I want you to think. Um, I want you to, you know, just kind of take some time to reflect. And then in the chat, I want you to put 10 words or less. Why do you want to be a teacher? All right, Dom, I've got yours. All right, Juliana, I've got yours. Um, for those of you that just got here, I'm giving you about a minute and a half more to reflect in a statement of 10 words or less. Why do you want to be a teacher? All right, Belinda, I've got yours. Luis, got it. Luis Aguilar, got it. All right, Martinez, I've got it. Luis Martinez. All right, I'm going to give you about another minute because I know this is this is kind of hard to to reflect, to be retrospective. Um, it's a little bit difficult. Daniela, okay, I've got yours. Oh, it's okay, Steph. It's okay. Um, Jackie. Okay. I've got yours, Jackie. Uh, so Stephanie, what we're doing is I want you to take a, a few minutes. I want you to reflect on why you want to be a teacher and then tell me in 10 words or less. Martin. Okay. I've got yours. All right. So if you uh, if you think of something between here and where in class uh, ends, you're welcome to add it into the chat. Oh, good, Jackie. I like that one. Helps students get out of their comfort zone. So so this is our this is our point where we're beginning. OK, um, this is your starting point around which you'll build your your essay, your assignment that you're turning in at the end of the week. Um, Esmer got it. 
Um, and so this is what you are going to use as always coming back, right? Like your thesis statement, except you're not going to actually write it like this in, in your, um, in your essay, right? This is a little bit different. So what I want to do is I'm going to share this screen with you. Did I save it or not? Or did I close it? Cause I'm done. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to share uh, a philosophy of education with you from one of my students last year. Um, this is one that I saved because I thought it was really good. Um, and I thought that it was a good example of, uh, of an educational philosophy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read parts of it to you. She starts by saying, Nelson Mandela once said, Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I want to become a teacher because I will impact students and I want to spread my creativity to my students. Okay. So then she talks about why people become teachers, right? She's like, other people become teachers because of this, but I want to be a teacher so I can impact my students. Um, and so she talks about the impact that she's going to have on her students and also that her students will have on their communities, right? So she talks about impact. Then she talks about creativity. Um, she wants them to be out of their comfort zone. She wants them to do fun things. Um, so she wants to set that example of, of activating her creativity um, and making sure that her students are also given a chance to be creative. Um, and then she talks about what she wants, how she wants her students to see her. I want my students to see me as fun and hardworking, but blunt. Um, and when she and I talked about this, I said, I think the word blunt has a negative connotation. Um, I think people really see that as, as a bad thing, but there's nothing wrong with being honest. Um, and so we sometimes take bluntness um, as a bad thing, when in reality, being blunt is about being honest um, and about, you know, speaking to things that that might make other people uncomfortable so her philosophy of education really showed you you know what it is that she was hoping to accomplish as a teacher and who she would be as a teacher um what your that's what your philosophy of education is going to do it's going to tell me it's going to tell us um why do you want to do this but also who will you be as a teacher? Um, and the interesting thing is this, I am a teacher even when I'm not in a classroom. Um, I, I, I'm one of those people and, and it drives my husband crazy. He's like, you're always explaining things to people. They didn't, they didn't ask you why, they just wanted to know, you know, which one. Well, yeah, but that's just who I am at this point. Um, and so it's, it's really funny because who you are as a teacher becomes who you are as a real person, right? As, a, as an outside of work, a real person. Um, and so this is going to kind of give you just some insight because what happens is, and it happens to everybody, right? Um, what happens on the first week of a diet, everybody's real good on that diet, right? You're eating real clean, you're drinking water, you're working out, you're watching, you know, what you're doing. And then the second week, you're like, I did so good last week. Let me have a soda. Right? I did so good last week. Let me have a tortilla. Right? And then you kind of stray. Well, guess what? That happens in life too. Um, you know, you're like, hey, I've never had a speeding ticket. I'm going to drive the speed limit all the time. And then you're like, sabes que I'm super late to Esmer's party. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rush. Um, or you say, uh, you know what? I don't, I don't say cuss words, but oh, this guy really bothered me. And so, you know, you're throwing them all over the place. Um, we all get a little bit off track. And so what this provides for you is kind of that that line of this is where, where I want to be. And so it may be something that as you start your education program in college, 
um, or you, I'm sorry, you continue your education program in college, you may come back to it and say, you know what, this is not necessarily how I want to be, or I am getting off track with this and I need to adjust. Um, so, so that's kind of the big purpose of this assignment. Um, so I want to show you this document. Um, and so this is just a guide. Obviously, I need to share my screen. Where's the little button? Um, and it's just a guide. It's not anything official, but I thought it would be helpful to you guys because it gives you some guiding questions. Um, so it says, first, state your objectives as a teacher. Um, and I, I, I would delete this whole sentence here. I'm going to mark it off because I don't think that this sentence is true. Um, your goals do not have to be measured by some kind of test. Okay. Um, as a CTE teacher, what I do is not measured by any kind of test. Okay. Um, what I do is measured by, um, are my students able to understand learning, to understand teaching, to do the things that, you know, the, the good practices that teachers do, but it's not a test, right? I'm not going to sit you down and, and give you a test and ask you, uh, what is a philosophy of education? It doesn't work like that in all things. Um, second, you want to talk about how are you going to do this, right? Um, so in my philosophy of education, I talk a lot about experiences. Um, and I talk a lot about making sure that students have experiences um, regardless of their background. So, um, and, and for me, that comes from growing up disadvantaged, growing up without a lot of money, um, but a big important thing for my mom was if the school had a trip, she, I do not I don't know how she did it. If the go, school had a trip, we had money for me to go on the trip. Um, because she thought if she can't take me, the school's going to take me, then she wasn't going to deprive me of those opportunities. So I think students having experiences is super important. Um, you know, when I taught science, it was hands-on stuff. When, uh, as an education teacher, I get to do hands-on stuff with you guys, but I get to watch you guys do hands-on stuff. Um, so in the second part, you're going to talk about how, right? This is the, how are you going to do things? Um, are you going to, uh, to do hands-on? Are you going to incorporate art? Are you going to incorporate music? Are you going to incorporate, um, you know, interdisciplinary where I'm teaching history and science together. Um, and then the third part is you're going to talk about your achievements. And again, I am going to say, don't even look at this part. Because for whatever reason, so much of our focus in education has been on tests. Um, and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, I Very few people have talked about this, but I think it's super important. Um, how many of you all took the STAR test last year? None of you, right? Nobody took the STAR test last year. Did you learn stuff? Yes, you did. Uh, did you did you still uh, manage to survive and go on to the next school year? Yes, you did. Okay. So to me, that tells me exactly how important those assessments are. Um, they're really not. They're really not that important. So um, so we're we're not going to worry about assessments, right? No, I don't think anybody's goal is. Um, I became a teacher, so 100% of my kids could pass the STAR test. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to talk about here is factors that motivate you to be in the teaching profession. And so that's the sentence that you all gave me earlier. What motivates you? Um, you know, for some of you, it might be a teacher that you had that was motivating, that gave you um, a great opportunity, that set a good example for you. Um and so your philosophy will be broken down into these three sections. Your objectives as a teacher. What are your goals? What, what is teaching about for you? Then how are you going to do it? And then the last is why, right? So what, how, and why? That's what your, your philosophy statement is, is broken up into. Um, so we're going to practice this one and I want us, uh, and so I'm going to give you the option. You can answer me out loud or you can answer me in the chat, but I want you to think about this question. I've circled it in red. 
Um, and I'm going to give you two minutes to think. Okay, I've circled it in red. I'm going to give you two minutes to think. And then, um, and then I'm going to start asking you guys to share your answer with me. So I've got the timer going. And in two minutes, we will discuss this question. All right, you've got about 15 seconds left. All right, so I'm gonna stop presenting that tab. Um, and so is there anyone that wants to tell me their answer to that question before I call on anybody, any volunteers? Okay, Valeria, when they're challenged. Um, students learn best when they're challenged. That's a great, uh, statement yes. and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to clarify so is it when they're challenged um, like in the quantity of work like I thought I could do five and you're making me do ten yes. or is it I thought this was easy and it's harder than I thought I like what where's the challenge that that you're Like a hoot. Okay, so uh, more like, I'm trying to think. Okay. Okay, so the word for that is rigor. Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat. Rigor, R-I-G-O-R. -R. Um, and I'm going to kind of define it by saying it's more depth. So I want you to think of it this way. Um, if, if Esmeralda is a mile away from me, right? It's easy for me to get to her if the road is flat between my house and Esmeralda's, right? Because it's flat. No batalla nada. I got there. Um, I could probably run part of the way. I could take a rest. But it wasn't hard because it was flat. Um, but if Esmeralda's a, a mile away, and there's hills, and maybe there's some water, and it was more challenging. Maybe it took me longer to get there, but I had more of an interesting experience, right? Um, and so rigor is about making that experience more challenging, um, but you learn more because you had a more challenging experience. So that is excellent, Valeria. I like that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, anybody else want to share what it looks like? Uh, a student learns best when? Okay, uh, Belinda, I believe students learn best when they experience hands-on activities and have fun while learning. Uh, fun memories stay in the uh, fun memories stay in their memories and the knowledge will be accompanied by fun memories. Okay, so that's really cool because your brain 
is like a ball of yarn, okay? Uh, but not a not like a brand new ball of yarn that you got at Michael's. Your brain is like a ball of yarn that has been sitting in your closet for a hundred years and it's all tangled up and things are connected and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna cut a piece and you cut it and it's this long and then you're like, okay, well, let me cut a piece from this side and it's, a, it's seven and a half feet long. So your brain has all these different connections um, and so if you associate them with more things, like let's say I was in a group and I did the connection with my best friend. I did the activity with my best friend, Jackie. And also we had fun. Now I have two connections to that activity. Um, so that one's, that's awesome, uh, Belinda. All right, Dom, I believe students learn best when the environment is welcoming um, and the teacher really puts their heart into teaching. So I, I'm, an, I'm playing devil's advocate, Dom. How do you know that the teacher has put their heart into teaching? Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak that a little bit for you. Okay, um, so we talked about rigor. What you're talking about is relationships, um, and relationships is building community in your classroom. Okay, so when you're building relationships, it's not saying these are my students and they're my friends. Okay. Um, don't ever say that. Like your students are not your friends. I love you dearly. Your teachers care about you, but we cannot be friends, right? Obviously, we talked about ethics uh, earlier in the year. Um, but you can have a relationship with your students, and you can say, "Hey, I care about Alicia. I I worry about her. I want her to do well. I want her to succeed. I want her to accomplish things. Um, I care about uh, Belinda. I want her." I want her to succeed, all of these things. But the relationship works both ways, right? So if you are sharing with your students and saying things like, oh yeah, well, you know, when I was in middle school, I got suspended a lot and uh, I was a troublemaker and you're gonna have students like this, um, that helps to build relationships. Now I'm not gonna say, oh yeah, last weekend I got real drunk and I, you know, fell off my porch or whatever, right? Um, there's also that limit of how much you share. But those relationships are important because that's how I feel safe as a student. Um, I know that we are in this together because we're building relationships. And so I know that I can take this risk of trying out this problem on the board um, and that the teacher understands and knows me and I'm going to be safe. So that was awesome, Dom. I appreciate that one. Uh, Juliana, when they're in the classroom and are able to pace themselves. Okay, Juliana. Um, yes and no. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. So yes, you, you set the pace, right? The teacher has two options. Okay, you can adjust to the pace of the student or you can drag them kicking and screaming. Okay. Life is a lot easier for everybody when you adjust to the pace of the students. But I'm going to tell you this. Let's say that Luis comes into class. Luis Martinez comes into class today. And uh, and he says, you know what, Ms. Brown? I'm real tired. I didn't sleep. Um, I don't feel like doing anything today. And I'm like, well, that sucks for you, Luis, because we have a lot of stuff to do. And he's like, oh, fine. And so Luis talks to his friends and they're like, Ah, yeah, me too. I don't want to do anything like, you know, we're, ah, we're not going to do it. And so we're in class and Luis, uh, the rest of, I'm on number five. I'm ready to go on with my life. And Luis is still on number one and all his friends are on number one. Um, I can't stop. I, I can't not keep going because Luis and his friends have decided that uh, they want to be lazy today. So you, you can allow the students to pace themselves, but you can't because if you allow them to pace themselves and they're slowing you down, then you're going to have your kids like Valeria that want to be challenged, that want to push themselves, that want to go harder and you're leaving them behind. Um, 
or they're leaving you behind. And so you're kind of going to have to juggle that, Juliana, back and forth of, um, am I pushing? Am I pulling? And it's kind of a dance. It's kind of a, um, I slow down, you speed up. Okay, where are we going? So I hope that clarified that, Juliana. Uh, let's see, Luis Martinez, when they're comfortable with the people around them and while listening to music. So I'm going to bring up a few things. Absolutely. We always work better around our friends. Except, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm looking at Esmeralda looked up at me when I said except. Because I had Esmer in one of my worst classes, right Esmer? I was always getting after that class. I was always so frustrated with that class because everybody in that class, either they were best friends or they hated each other. There was no in between in that class. Um, either they wanted to, and, and Esmer can tell you, her little group, I separated them and they would come back together. And I would separate them and they would come back together. It was ridiculous. So then it was like, I'm not even gonna fight with you anymore. I'm not because it's not worth me getting frustrated. Um, so yeah, you work better with friends until you don't, right? Um, and they and they're not bad kids, right? I love all of them, but it was just kind of like, oh my god, can you stop talking so I can talk about this thing that's super important? Um, and so, so you're gonna have to find that balance, right? You're gonna have to build that relationship to to where at the end of the year I could tell Esmer and her group like, okay, guys, yeah, Blackinson, because I have to get through this today, and then I'll let you be crazy. Um, and so, so it's a, it's a balance. The same thing with the music, you're going to have kids. Remember we talked about multiple intelligences, um, your kids that are musical learners, you can't put music with words because you're going to lose them. They're going to tune you out and they're going to listen to the music and all they're going to learn about is, uh, I don't know. There's not even a song that I can reference. that's appropriate right now. Um, so <laughs> something for you to think about there, Luis. All right, uh, Jacqueline, I believe that students learn best when they feel safe while learning. Yes, 100% yes, Jackie. Um, safety is important. And so I want to I want to tell you that safety doesn't just mean am I safe from physical harm, okay? Um, emotional harm, psychological harm. Um, your students take risks all the time. And this is a conversation that we, your teachers, have had even just this year. Um, it's been a big challenge for us, and it's been something that we've been talking about since the first week of school. Um, you guys, like, I'll give you this example. This class is really good about interacting with me. Um, I have another class where nobody speaks the whole class period. <sighs> Excuse me. Nobody speaks the whole class period. And... Uh, and it's like weird, like it's weird because I can see the little squares and I'm talking and in the chat, nobody answers me and out loud, nobody answers me. Um, and so I, ta I was talking to some of my colleagues and I said, I don't know how to make them feel safe. And they're like, what do you mean? Like they're at home. Of course they're safe. I said, no, they don't know me. So they don't feel safe answering questions. Um, because it's a risk, right? I could uh, I could have Martin answer a question and be like, Martin, you're so stupid. That's a dumb answer. Why would you say that? Whatever. That's not making him feel safe. Um, and so so it's you're you're a hundred percent correct, Jackie. Your students have to feel safe and they have to feel included. Um, you know, I worry about things like, okay, when my chat is open, can I see everybody that's in class? Um, can I, am I calling on everybody? Am I, um, you know, am I making sure that I include everybody? And so those are all things that I want to do to make sure that everybody feels included. So, um, so yeah, you're a hundred percent right, Jackie. Um, is it your sixth? It is my sixth period class. Um, it, it's very stressful that class because it's so quiet. Um, all right. So let's see. I got Jackie, Alicia. I think they learn best when they are face to face with a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. We like it better like that too, Alicia. Um, we, so, so here's the thing. We, um, 
you know, over the summer we got this, uh, you know, we were getting emails. Yes, we're going back. No, we're not going back. Uh, yes, we're teaching online. No, we're not teaching online, whatever. Right. So at the beginning of the year, we're like, okay, look, we're going to make this work. It's going to be great. Um, it's going to be fine. We all hate it. At the end of the first week, I called Ms. Gomez and I said, I don't like it. I'm going back to school. She's like, you can't. I was like, please, I need my children. Um, nobody likes this. And I am a hundred percent, uh, with you on that. Um, you know, we, there's a lot of fear, Alicia. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of risk. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that are scary about the video thing. And yeah, you don't want to ask questions, um, because it's different, right? Like in a classroom, you could kind of be like, Hey, Miss Brown, come over here. And then ask me the question on the side and not put yourself out there in front of everybody. And you really can't whisper to me in here um, unless you like send me an email. And then after class, I look at it and then I answer, you know what I mean? Like it's a whole different, it's a different ball game. So yeah, I think student safety, um, Alicia, that comes back to that. All right, Esmer, students learn best when there's an emotional appeal to the lesson. Um, I want to manipulate the lesson, know my crowd in order to make it relatable. That, that's a good idea. And I'll tell you why I like it, because as as animals, as human beings, we are animals as animals, our emotions are our strongest sense. Um, we tend to forget our logic and our thinking when our emotions come into play. Um, but that's not going to work for any everybody. So like Luis Martinez wants to teach chemistry. It's hard to make chemistry emotional. Um, it's it's hard to make physics emotional. Uh, and you guys might have felt emotional in geometry, but it's just because you were sad because it was math. It wasn't that the content was emotional. Um, so yeah, there are definitely there are definitely situations where you can use emotions. I think any connection, right? Um, connecting to a student's interests, connecting to a student's um, past, right? So maybe I know that uh, that uh, Daniela's mom is an astronaut, and I'm like, hey, Daniela, your mom's an astronaut. Uh, did you know that her gravity is less on the moon than it is here? And let's talk about gravity, right? Um, so so any kind of connection, Esmer, is a good thing. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Let's see, Martin. Uh, teacher focuses on teaching the subject and makes it interesting rather than teaching for the test. Yes. Uh, teaching for the test is basically going to make students memorize things if you teach the sub subject, they'll go to your class and learn something. Yes. Um, I think I think that all kind of ties together, right? You have to. So somebody talked about having heart. Dom talked about having heart. It's the passion. It's how you share things. If, it's, if you make it interesting, your students are going to think it's interesting. Um, I had a really good uh, mentor when I was an administrator. And one of the things that she told me, was that you can't sell it if you don't buy it, right? Um, I can't I can't tell you, oh my gosh, Dr. Pepper, it's so delicious and it's it's so refreshing and it tastes so good and whatever if I don't drink Dr. Pepper, right? I have to know what it tastes like to be able to tell you why you should drink it. Um, if you don't if you don't buy it, if you don't believe that your subject is cool and fun and interesting, how are you gonna get the kids to believe that? right? Um, how are you going to get them to buy into they should care about um, the catcher in the rye or um, Antigone or whatever, right? You have to believe that it's important and interesting. Uh, Luis Aguilar, I think students learn best when they can relate. Yes, when they can relate it to the real world, suddenly that thing that you want me to learn uh, is that much more important. Um, and so, uh, I was, you were not in my best class, Martin. You were that whole year. All my classes were terrible, <laughs> except my education classes. Um, your writing teacher did that in seventh grade. Yeah. Juliana, like, like there's a lot of really good things that your teachers have done out there. Um, and so, so hopefully this conversation, this thinking about these things, are helping you to develop that um, that philosophy that you're going to create. So tomorrow we're going to keep talking about this. 
Um, we're going to go through some examples tomorrow. Um, I am going to share the Help Center one more time in case uh, not everybody got to log in. Mr. Hill, Mr. History does that. I love it. Isn't he awesome? Um, he, I, He's one of my good friends and we enjoy talking about history stuff. Um, yeah. And he, and, and you know what I like is that, um, he just knows it, right? He just knows stuff. And so when he's talking about it, it comes very naturally. And there's, there've been times where I'll, like, I feel really smart when I teach him something. Like when I bring something up and he's like, I didn't know that. And I'm like, all right. Like, um, he's, he's a really good teacher. And so those are things that, that he knows it. Why? Because he's passionate about it because he studied it because he really, uh, looks at things in that way and then puts all, puts it all together. Because I, I really think the beginning of his class is interesting, um, because he kind of, I, I, I know you guys have noticed it by now, but he's giving you little pieces of the puzzle, right? as he's explaining things. And then all of a sudden at the end, it's like, bam, here's the picture. I can't hear you, Esmer. Oh. Yeah, everything makes sense at the end. And one of the things that I learned, I've never taken his class, obviously. Um, but I've learned from students that he says, I tell you that to tell you this. I don't know if he's still doing that because I, I, I told him about it last year. And he was like, I'm going to stop doing that. Um, but he's telling you all the parts. And then at the end, it's like, okay, guys, use your brain. Put it all together. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, Martin, I'm going to share that with him because I'm sure that he will uh, he will appreciate that. Uh, like the Freedom Riders. Exactly, Esmer. Um, if there's anyone that can't find the movie, please let me know what your alternate movie is going to be. Um, and I'll let you pick it. There's lots of really great teacher movies out there. Uh, one of my favorite is Stand and Deliver. Uh, Stand and Deliver is one of my favorite, favorite movies. Um, and you know what? I'm going to share my the scene from Stand and Deliver that I love. Um, no, it's not Stand and Deliver. It's... Uh, Mr. Feeney. Oh, from, um, yes, from Boy Means World. Okay. Uh, let me see. It's the one that I'm thinking of, Esmer, is Lean on Me. Okay, so this one is about, um, movie. Lean on Me. I, so it's a really, really good movie. Um, I'm going to share this clip. Let me go ahead and set it up to share. Um, there we go. Okay. And then hopefully you all can hear it. I'll turn the volume. Obviously not this commercial. Okay.
chills, guys. Chills. I get chills every time I watch that movie. Um, so that was one of my favorites. That's one of my favorite. Um, that's one of my favorite um, scenes from that movie. There's a lot of really good ones. Um, so if you can watch that one, Luis, I don't know if you were able to find uh, Freedom Riders, but that's another really good one. Um, there is some adult language, but you'll get over it. Um, so some really good stuff out there, guys. Uh, we'll continue talking about your philosophy of education tomorrow. Um, take a look at the assignment on Blackboard. That way, if you have any questions, you can ask me tomorrow. And I will see you then. Bye, folks. Bye, guys.